Hello everyone. In the previous start stop solution, which was version V1, Azure Automation account along with its runbook were used to start and stop the virtual machine. But now Microsoft recommend using the start stop version V2, where you will use a function app, Azure Logic app, as well as the storage account. This new version 2 solution is very complex and I'll try to break down the solution and explain in this video. So let's start. What can this solution do? So as the name suggests, it can stop and start the virtual machines. So the first one is scheduled stop start, where based on the different schedule and the timer, you can start or stop the virtual machines. But now question is, this scheduled stop start was available in the previous version also using the Azure automation account. So why Microsoft has recommended the version V2? And the reason is the sequence stop start. So let's take an example in your environment. If you have two servers, one is application server, which is connected to database server, and you don't want to shut down both of these servers together. You want a sequence to follow. So while shutting down the application server should be shut down first and then the database server. First, all the data should be written to the database server, which is from the application server. Then only the database server should be stopped. And there is a specific starting sequence also. First, you need the database server to be up and then the application server, because as soon as the application server will be up, it'll try to connect with the database. And if they are started together, database server takes more time and then there will be failure in the connection. So to avoid this, we have to follow a sequence for starting and stopping these virtual machines. And this is the reason Microsoft is recommending version V2 because in version V1, because in version V1, this sequencing was not supported. However, it's supported in version V2. And the last option is auto stop. So based on the CPU utilization and the specific time frame, like you can define that during the off hours, the specific virtual machine, if the CPU utilization is below 10%, it should be shut down. So this feature is also supported in version V2. So now let's talk about the workflow and the different services used. So when you deploy this solution, there are five different logic apps are created. Two for scheduler, stop and start, two for sequence, stop and start, and one for auto stop. So in the logic app, you define the scheduler, which is the timer, as well as the configuration, which virtual machines needs to be stopped or start. So once that is done, the logic app sends a request to the function app. So here it's mentioned as function because in this solution, a single function app will be created where there will be 12 different functions, which I'll show further in this video. So once the request is sent from the logic app, it acts as an HTTP trigger for the function app and the specific function is triggered. And this function sends a request to the storage account where the queue is defined. So it updates the queue that the specific virtual machine needs to be stopped or started. And based on the queue trigger, another function, it, it picks up that message and stops or start that virtual machine. But for the function to stop and start that virtual machine, you need specific permission or role based access control on that virtual machine. And for that manage identity is being used in the, in this solution. And finally, once the virtual machine is started or stopped, it sends a notification using the action group, but by default, it uses the email notification. So once you'll provide your email, as soon as the start and stop is triggered, it will send a notification to the user. So now to deploy this function, what are the prerequisites? There is only one prerequisite, which is you should have owner level access in the subscription before deploying this solution because it uses managed identity where the role based access control has to be defined. Function app has to be provided certain permissions over the virtual machines and everything is taken care by itself using the solution. So you should have the owner level access. Otherwise the deployment of the solution will fail. So as I have already mentioned, when you create this solution or when you, when you deploy the solution, there is a single function app, which is created. However, there are 12 different functions which are created in that function app. So I've divided these function into different categories and the trigger type for the scheduled and sequence VM start stop. There are three functions. First one is the scheduled function, which is an HTTP trigger, which is triggered using the logic app. Then the virtual machine request orchestrator, it picks up the message from the queue that these specific virtual machine needs to be stopped or start. And then the third function, which is virtual machine request executor will go ahead and stop and start the virtual machine. 
work and for the different category which is auto stop workflow there is a function name as auto stop it is based on the cpu utilization then it create auto stop alert executor and auto stop vm alert trigger so it will send an alert that this virtual machine is stopped there are different functions for monitoring and analysis for heartbeat availability test so every 15 minutes this function keeps on checking the virtual machine whether they are shut down or not for that specific period which is defined in the logic app and there are three different functions which define the cost as well as the saving for these virtual machine but these are used by microsoft for all the customers so that they can collect the data how much this solution is beneficial for the customer so i have marked it in red because it's of no use to you and then the configuration updates using these two functions a new version of this solution is deployed uh, however microsoft has stopped updating this solution directly and now let's talk about the configuration so to define the scheduled vm start stop so you just have to provide the schedule in the logic app and then provide the virtual machine list or the resource group or the subscription where all the virtual machines will be stopped now in the case of the sequence because we have to define the sequence so you need to provide the different tags like sequence start sequence stop up on those virtual machines so you have to define one and two so during the start this machine virtual machine v1 should start first and then virtual machine v2 however during the stop first virtual machine v2 should stop and then virtual machine v1 and the third one is the auto stop where in the logic app you will define the cpu utilization threshold so if it's less than 5% then it will check whether the cpu utilization of the server is less than 5% during the off business hours it will stop the server and send you a notification and now i want to talk about different limitations too in my opinion if you just want stop and start of the virtual machine this solution is very complex because if something breaks it's very difficult to figure it out and fix it like i'll give an example because the functions are being managed by the solution so you can directly edit them and if the function is broken it will be very difficult to troubleshoot it another limitation is the level of access it provides on the function app because the function stop and start the virtual machine based on role based access control however however virtual machine operations role should suffice but in this case the whole function app is provided contributor level access on, on the subscription itself which i think it's not a good idea to provide the contributor level access another one is no further development now the microsoft is just updating the github it's not directly updating or auto updating this function there are deprecated functions as i have shown in the red so this is also one of the reason why microsoft is not removing them instead of just deprecating them and the last one is the limited scope of sequencing so if you want multiple servers to be sequenced it becomes more difficult and you have to apply tag on all the servers and then manage the tag and the sequence so it's a bit complicated but still it works very well because in version v1 it was not even supported i have already deployed this solution so i'll quickly show you how it looks like so this is the resource group where i have already explained there will be five different logic apps one for auto stop another one another two for schedule stop and start and the sequence start and stop and then there is an action group where you can define your email address and you will get a notification based on that and then a single function app is created where if you'll go to the different functions there are 12 different functions which are created here and these are the different triggers for those functions however there are certain issues with this function because i have stopped and start the virtual machine there is a dashboard which is a shared dashboard if we we'll go here it should show all the virtual machines which are stopped and start which are failed and recently attempted actions it's though for some reason it's not working for me and because the solution deploys everything and and takes care of all the logging and the application inside so this should work automatically but somehow it's not working for me so just wanted to let you know that this solution works great for what it does but there are certain things which should be taken care by microsoft which will make the experience much better
So that's all for this video. In the second video, which will be the part two, I'll provide the step-by-step -step deployment of this solution and then start and stop the virtual machine based on schedule, sequence and auto stop. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.